I, I would say I, just a piece of advice would be to start building things as soon as possible. Like you don't have to really know that much about programming. And it's, it's really amazing how far you can get just by like taking the few concepts you learn and, and combining them together to create a project, right? So if you just pick something, if you pick, let's say you want to build a, uh, let's say you want to build a program that keeps track of your calendar, something like that. That's a great place to start. And that's also <laughs> when you, when you do start looking for jobs as a software developer, that is really going to make a great impression having those portfolio pieces to, uh, to show, right? It shows that you shows that not only do you know what you're doing, but that you choose to do it in your own free time, which obviously software development managers love that because that means that if you, you know, if, if you think programming is fun, you're not going to, you know, five o'clock's not going to roll around and you're going to be like, all right, done. I'm going to go do what I actually like doing, right? You're going to actually spend your free time thinking about these things, which is super important because it's really, I don't know, it, it, software development, I would say, is at its core a, a very creative discipline, which I think is a big misconception that people have, right? They, I think that whenever, whenever my relatives ask me like what I do and I tell them that I work with computers or you know, I, I usually give them the watered <laughs> because they don't care about the details. But I, I think that they really picture me typing like numbers into a spreadsheet or something. And that's obviously not. It's, it's, it's very creative, right? There's a lot that you can, a lot of different directions that you can go in to solve like the same problem. And that's really where uh, you, you have a lot of freedom. And that's, you know, there, there's more than one way of getting to the, to the same place. So it, it's cool stuff. It's a good question. I, I think that, well, the number one misconception is that it's hard, right? Or that, that it takes a certain type of person. And this is the same kind of thing that you hear in, you know, artistic fields. It's like some people just have it. That's false. That's absolutely wrong, right? Some, the people that just have it just did it a lot as a kid, right? But I mean, myself, I'm not a natural, but natural program or whatever that means, right? I'm, I, I, I wanted to go to art school back when I was in college and you know, decided to go into something where you could actually reliably make money, right? <laughs> For, as most people do. Um, but uh, it's it does take some time for your brain to adjust to that manner of thinking, right? Because we're used to, most people are just used to, like if I were to ask you for instructions on how to use a microwave, right? You'd be like, well, just put it in there and set it for a minute. Right. But you have to get obviously very specific when you're talking to a computer. So you'd have to to use that metaphor again. You'd have to say, well, open the door, put the food in, let go of the food, take your hand out, close the door, press the one, press the zero, press the zero. So it's I mean, it, it's learning to think in a in a much more detailed way about what problem you need to solve and what exact things you need. But everyone can do that. Right. I mean, you know, people, you, most people do that every day without realizing it. I mean, whatever, take, take whatever hobby you have and chances are you're already doing it there, right? If you, you know, if you like to play piano or something like that, you're, you really are doing something that's very close to, uh, you know, taking a problem and writing a program for it. You're just doing it kind of naturally. Yeah. So I think, and then this is especially true now. Because the number of technologies out there, the number of options keeps growing, right? It used to be everyone learned C++ or like whatever the, whatever, whatever the language was. But there's so many options now, right? There's Python, there's JavaScript, there's Java. And then within those languages, there's so many different libraries and frameworks you can use, right? So just for web development alone, all JavaScript, you can pick React or Angular or uh, view or Svelte or then the, the list goes on, right? Th those are the most popular ones, but there's, I would say probably dozens of other options. Um, but I think that people make the mistake of thinking that, <laughs> thinking that it really truly matters which one they choose and they'll spend, I mean, a lot of people will, uh, so let me, let me backtrack here and say that it, it, it does matter for your use case. Like if you're starting a software company, it, your choice of the technology does matter. But as a software developer, if you're trying to get into the field, don't waste your time like agonizing over like, which library should I learn? Should I learn Angular? Because 
uh, of these things or should I learn React or should I learn Vue? Like just learn one because the fact is that a lot of the a lot of the concepts carry over pretty pretty nicely between all of them. Um, it's really just important that you get started and start building things. Really, there's only a handful of concepts that you have to understand. Most of the most of the front end frameworks, for example, are centered around this idea of uh, just automatically updating the interface when the data changes. That's really all the things like React and Angular and Vue are. Because if you write that in like vanilla JavaScript, which basically just means you write your own front end library to manage all of the you know manage manage the user interface. Um, you you find out pretty quickly that that's like the number one hardest thing or the the number one thing that's you know that, that makes that app hard to build and maintain and so react and angular and those view are just taking that part of the equation out for you so that you can focus on like no matter what the uh you know let's let's take the idea of just using a, a simple simple application where it's just a, a a button that keeps track how many times it's clicked right um you can just say that here I want it to display whatever the count is. I don't care what it is. I just want to display it here. Versus like if you weren't using React or Angular or Vue, you'd have to actually say, "All right, find this part of the uh, find this part of the interface, remove whatever is there, and put the new count there." You'd you'd have to actually go into detail on how you want that done. Um, but uh, so anyway, g- going back to the original question of like misconceptions about programming. You hear an awful lot of technologies thrown around, right? And a lot of the fact is that a lot of hiring managers, I think, focus too much on the technologies. I suspect because it's not usually like a technical person writing those descriptions, right? It's the usually the way that those things work is, um, you know, someone will just ask for, you know, the the hiring manager or whatever will just ask some of the programmers like okay what what does someone need to know to do this job right and how roughly how many years do they need of that um but those numbers really are pretty meaningless and and uh that that i mean that's kind of an exciting thing about the the latest technologies like react for example is that you can it's not like c++ where it's been around for decades and in order to really be an expert in it you have to have decades of experience right with the latest technologies, because they've changed so recently, right? I mean, a lot of the older React code from a few years ago doesn't really work in, you know, in, in the newer React versions. Um, so you can you can become an expert in those things pretty quickly, uh, and and you know you can get to a level that companies need you to be at pretty quickly. I mean, I would say. You know, if we want to stick in the front end development realm, most people it, it, it's it's kind of interesting because React is definitely kind of the the winner, if you want to put it that way, in that in that universe. Um, but the problem I think is that a lot of people only have ever used React. They've never actually used vanilla JavaScript, which again is just writing websites without any of those libraries, which is a pretty rare thing for people to do these days. So I guess I would recommend that <laughs> you you don't have to like really get deep into it you, and you don't have to spend too much time on this but I would really recommend that that a lot of people actually try and like build an app without those libraries just to just so that you can better understand what they're doing behind the scenes right I mean I mentioned earlier that uh uh react and angular those things are really just their primary concern in most cases is just keeping the user interface up to date with the data. And most people don't really know that, right? Most people don't know what React is. They just know that it's the hot technology, so they have to learn it, right? But that, I mean, knowing what it is actually for can really make you much better at the technology itself, right? Because you understand kind of where that technology's responsibilities lie and where your responsibilities are right so it's um i think that's uh that would be my recommendation is like if you've only ever worked with one technology look it up just look up other things right if you've only ever worked with react try angular try view yes they're not the most popular right if you if you're looking for uh 
if you're looking to learn like the hottest technology, they're not gonna like they're not it, but they will make you actually a much better React developer in the same way that like if you're learning another language, you really have to, it really kind of helps you understand like, oh, that's why we say things like that in English, right? Or whatever your native language is. So it, it's it's very much that same kind of thing.